Hello everybody. Today we're talking about Jaguar rev counters, in particular the rev counter off my Mark II Jaguar. Now being ancient technology, this doesn't work off a pulse, it works off a generator. And as luck would have it, I have a Mark II Jaguar generator for the rev counter in the vice. So the idea is that this is mechanically driven, it generates a voltage, so when it's connected to the rev counter, the faster it spins, the more the needle moves. So just to prove this, I've set up this experiment. We've got a simulated camshaft drive in my electric drill. We've got our meter set on voltage. So I think you can see the faster it's driven the higher the voltage is produced. So it's absolutely not a pulse, it is more like the dynamo on your bicycle and the faster you pedal the brighter the lights are. Okay so now we've established how the system is set up to work, the only thing left to do is to see it working as it would be in the car and then we can basically put it to bed. So I'm just set up again as you see. Apart from the needle being sticky, I think we're all on the same page that in standard form, anyway, that's how it works. Now why is that a problem for me? Well, on my Mark II I've got a later engine and it doesn't have the mechanical drive on the back of the camshaft. So, with the best will in the world, the rev counter we've just been looking at is never going to work. And if you are doing an engine swap or just a head swap, maybe you'll go into straight port head or whatever you're up to, this may be an issue for you in the future. So, let me get set up again and we'll see if we can come up with a solution. So when I left you last, we were discussing that this was not going to work with my engine because I don't have a generator. So the next contender is this fella. This is out of a Series 1 XJ6 and it's the RVI style of rev counter. The reason this is a good contender is because it's the right size so it will fit straight into the dashboard uh, it's negative earth which we're gonna need uh, it works off a pulse so we don't need a generator and it works with points and condenser setup which we have at the moment so what we need to know now is how these things are wired up so let's have a look at that. So this type has two white wires and a green wire and an earth terminal on the frame. Now what the Haynes manual doesn't tell you is although they're both white, one's marked with a red and one's marked with a little bit of black. And that's important that we get that round the right way. So that's it as far as the wiring on the actual rev counter goes. Now when it comes to how to wire it, 
the green is positive just goes straight to the supply the two white cables you can see coming out of the rev counter are in fact the same wire so one goes into the back of the rev counter it loops around a sensor without connecting to anything and comes straight back out so it is in fact although there's two there it's both ends of the same piece of wire um, inside there'd be a very very sensitive piece of electronic equipment that can pick up the switch pulse of the coil switching on and off but from our point of view we just need to connect the white wire marked with the red to the ignition supply on the way to the coil the one marked with the black goes to coil positive and this is for a negative error setup which these days is what it's going to be mainly so the other side of the coil the negative goes to your distributor points as normal and all that's happening is as the points switch the coil on and off this super sensitive piece of equipment inside the rev counter is picking up those pulses so we're basically putting the rev counter in series with the feed to the coil so all that's good in theory so let's go and connect up on the car and see if it'll work okay so here it is set up in the car so green goes to permanent positive the inductive loop with the red stripe goes to the supply to the coil and the inductive loop with the black stripe goes to the coil itself so that's it as far as the supply wiring goes and then of course we've got uh, an earth connection here which just goes to the body of the rev counter so let's start her up and see if it works Okay, so that's a good start. Okay, good job. So now we succeeded in getting the 1970s technology working. The next thing that came along was RVC type rev counters. The reason being is these type don't work with electronic ignition. So the answer to that was the next generation in the 1980s and we can quickly talk about how these are wired up these are easier thankfully so we've still got our green so that's our positive and the other one is the pulse which goes to the negative of the coil so for all intents and purposes you can connect this across your coil and it will just work so when it comes to the time for me to fit electronic ignition uh, to the car my options are to upgrade this one to RVC 
by fitting a replacement printed circuit board inside of here. My other option could be to take the guts out of this and fit it in the old star box. So just to prove that this will work on electronic ignition that's been retrofitted the only car I've got with retrofitted electronic ignition is my Mini so let's see some a quick bit of footage of the Mini running with this connected to it Now I should say that obviously that wasn't reading correctly because it was connected to a four cylinder engine and this is calibrated to run on a six cylinder engine. This rev counter is out of a series three XJ6. So that's the end of my little video on Jaguar rev counters down the ages. Thanks ever so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.